just my sorry for 2024 And I ain't gonna mess up no more This year I'ma take this one chance to make it real clear I'm sorry for me Sorry for you Sorry for July In case I don't tell you August, September, October, November To your December I'm sorry Sorry for 2024 Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. This is my sorry for 2024. And I ain't gonna mess up no more This year I'ma take this one chance To make it real clear I'm sorry for me Sorry for you Sorry for July In case I don't tell you August, September, October, November To your December I'm sorry Sorry for 2024 Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. This is my sorry for 2024, and I ain't gonna mess up no more this year. I'ma take this one chance to make it real clear. I'm sorry for me, sorry for you, sorry for July. In case I don't tell you, August, September, October, November to your December. I'm sorry, sorry for 2024. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Oh. This is my sorry for 2024, and I ain't gonna mess up no more this year. I'ma take this one chance to make it real clear. I'm sorry for me, sorry for you, sorry for July, in case I don't tell you. August, September, October, November to your December. I'm sorry, sorry for 2024. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, 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 Hello, good evening, everybody. Good evening, family. Welcome to our hour of power. We are officially live. All right, Wapsi, come on in and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's share, first of all, with our Facebook uh, friends and with anybody you can think of. Go ahead and share the link and let everybody know that it's our hour of power and we are live and ready to go. All right, Deacon JB, good evening to you. Dr. T, Mama Bynes, 
All right, Star. Hey, hey, Sister Terry, Evangelist Angela, Sister Maya, Deacon Lorraine, Dr. Tiana, Brother George Hill, Sister Valencia. All right. Hello, y'all. I hope y'all had a great day. And um, it's going to get even better. Brother John, good evening, sir. All right. So I know people are starting to come in and starting to get notified that we're live. Deacon Debbie, we missed you on Sunday, but we know that you are having a good time in Barbados. <laughs> and we're so glad that you arrived there safely. And we can't wait until you arrive back to us safely as well. Elder Arlene, good evening to you. All right, Deacon Renee, good evening. Hello, hello. We um, are just getting on and just letting everybody know that we're live. Hey, Sister Vicki. Howdy, howdy. All right, Sister Erica. Good evening. I love that we have some of our new partners on. Bishop. Hello, Bishop. Good evening to you. Amen. We got our Bishop on, so we know it's going to be a good night. Hello, Elder Jashelle. All right, just taking a moment <clears throat> to greet people as they come on in. Oh, <laughs> Deacon E, we thought it was Sister Vicky. He has hijacked Vicky's computer. LOL. <laughs> All right. Good evening, Diane. Good evening. All right. Okay, so that's really cool. So, Prophet Cindy, hello. It's letting me know that you're joining us from YouTube. That's really, really cool. All right, so tonight we're streaming here on Facebook Live. And then I am seeing that um, we have some, some people on YouTube as well. And I can see your comments. So hello to you. I love that. So the people on Facebook, they can't see your comments, but I can see them. So I'll let them know what's going on there. <laughs> All right. Um, but if you want to take a part in the comment section, um, that is primarily going on on Facebook. But we're working out some things. The media team is working with me so we can see some um, different ways that we can just reach more people. All right. And um, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. But Sister Diane. Oh, okay. Sister Diane from St. Stephen Baptist Church. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. We had a great time over at St. Stephen um, a couple of weeks ago. So bless you. And I pray that you were blessed when we were over there with you guys. And uh, we always send our love to Bishop Twyman and to that amazing church. Good evening, Dr. Shanice. Brother Dempsey. All right now. Good evening, Brother Dem Dempsey. Uh, we have uh, Pastor Reggie Royal. God bless you, sir. Bless you and your family. Hello, Dr. Deacon Robin. Awesome, awesome. Well, look, y'all are coming on in and y'all are letting everybody know that we're live. So uh, we are definitely, definitely going to go ahead and, and get started. And we're going to have a little fun tonight, if that's all right. <laughs> uh, we always like to uh, let you know that any day is a great day to sow seed. So um, if you're joining us tonight and you would like to sow a seed into this ministry, it is fertile ground. And uh, we do have a lot of fruit um, to back that up. We bless God for that. Um, so feel free. The information should be scrolling down at the bottom of the screen to let you know our various virtual options for our ways to give into the ministry. So um, even a Wednesday is a great day to sow. Amen. And um, in case you missed it, what's that acronym they use on social media? I C Y M I. In case you missed it, somebody might have seen that acronym and was wondering what it means. Well, you learned something tonight you didn't expect. That means in case you missed it, Bible study is now virtual. Okay. Bible study is now virtual. Uh, we will be meeting together virtually on these platforms unless we say otherwise. So stay tuned for the next time that we meet up physically. Um, but right now we're meeting on Wednesdays through our virtual platforms. So 
Thank you uh, so much for joining us, everybody who has been joining us. We are virtual, and um, I love how Wapsi just pivots, you know, with whatever God is doing in a particular season, moment, or time. So thank you guys for pivoting with us as we um, go virtual with our Bible study. And since we've gone virtual, we have been blessed tremendously. So we we know that God is in it. Um, speaking of that, I want to give a testimony. I know we normally give the prayer requests and the praise reports at the end, but I want to give a praise report. It was a couple of days ago and I um, walked into Royal Farms. Anybody know about Royal Farms? You might have been blessed by the Royal Farms ministry at some point in your life. <laughs> but anyway, so go ahead into Royal Farms and um, I get recognized by one of the workers and she comes from behind the counter and she says, hey, let me ask you a question. So I'm like, all right. And she says, don't you do Bible study? Um, I, I was on, on, on Wednesday, I was on your Bible study. And the amazing thing is she um, doesn't know me and she doesn't even remember uh, exactly who shared it, but she saw, that's why I say at the beginning, share that we're live. She saw that somebody, one of her Facebook friends shared it. So while she was scrolling, she decided to stop and she was blessed. So uh, it's my prayer that she's back on tonight and um, I'll continue to see her virtually and I'll see her in person at Royal Farms. Amen. <laughs> but that is a testament and a testimony um, that indeed this uh, virtual platform is reaching people, all right? People that we know, people that we don't know. So continue to share, continue to not haul this goodness to yourself because especially the topic that we're on now regarding forgiveness and apologies and the apology languages, it's something that is for everybody. It's literally for everybody. If you are a human being, this is for you. All right. All right. So let me see what's going on in the chat here. Hello. Hello. All right. Briante. Hello, sir. All right. From Charles Herbert Flowers. Yes, indeed. Um, good evening to Minister Geraldine, and good evening to Deacon Butler, Dr. Naomi. Good evening. All right. Hey, y'all. Thanks for joining us. All right, we got Brother Wilkes off the drums and on the live. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I love when the musicians, you know, who serve in the church also are there uh, to be fed, you know, and to be a part. Um, so God bless you, Brother Duran. Hello, sir. Brother Will James. Hello. Hope you're doing well. All right, Drea. Good to see you as well. So if, you, if you're here and you just want to say, hey, go ahead and put it in the comments section. Um, and, and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We thank you for being amazing. We thank you for being awesome. We thank you for being good. And we thank you for being God. Um, Lord, we thank you that you brought us to this moment. Uh, in our week. And um, everything may not have been perfect, but we are here, Lord. And um, we believe that it's going to get better because we're here together uh, to spend time, Lord God, in a way and in a manner that is focused ultimately on you. We pray that people are blessed tonight and we pray that ultimately you have your way. Be sovereign over tonight. Be sovereign over this moment. Be sovereign over this virtual Bible study. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. So um, in case you you saw the, the image, the flyer, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about a, a topic that I touched on on Sunday. If you listen to the message on Sunday, if you were in the room or maybe you uh, joined us virtually uh, from out of town or wherever you are, Sunday's message uh, was kind of, it was the first time really on a Sunday talking about what we're talking about on a Wednesday, but it's a message that God gave us um, in the midst of what he's given us in Bible study. On a Sunday morning, he gave us this word. Uh, and, and what was the title of that message? Was it the duplicity, duplexity? 
duplexity. What was that word? <laughs> yes, indeed. The duplexity of love and forgiveness. And it was basically about how uh, love and forgiveness is not just something that should be experienced toward us from God um, or even uh, toward God from us. It's not just a vertical thing. It's very much a horizontal thing. One with another, it should be shared. And God has made that plain in scripture. And if you don't know that, you need to go back and you need to check out the, the, the stream, the message. Um, it's on our YouTube. Just go to uh, YouTube and type in Word of Prayer Cultural Center and check out Sunday's message because scripture makes it super duper plain how God views um, peace, you know, and how God views uh, forgiveness and extending grace to one another and how it is very, very important to him. So if you missed it, listen, if, if we had to get chin checked, you do too. You should go ahead and you should watch it because it's going to bless you in an incredible way. If you want to get some hints on ways that it'll bless you, go to our um, Instagram. It's right at the bottom of the screen. You can see the IG logo. Our Instagram is WOPCC. And we have a post up with some photos, some amazing photos. Shout out to Brother Dixon. Shout out to Brother John, who collaborated on some of those amazing photos. And then underneath in the comment section and in the poll, you can get some hints on some adjectives that may be used to describe your experience while you're watching that word. Okay, body slam. Hilarious. Evangelist, body slam. Hey, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> but we're all the better because of it. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay, the duplexity of love and forgiveness. That's right. That's right. So go ahead and, and check that out. All right. So um, we talked about that on, on Sunday. Last Wednesday, we really got into the apology languages, exactly what they are. There are five of them. And we took a quiz to see how we you know, fall, which one is our main one, what comes maybe in a close second etc. So um, there is this quiz. I'll put, I'll put it up on the screen in case you didn't take it and you want to take it um, if, if some kind of way uh, that can be copied and pasted or maybe I'll put it in the comments or somebody can put it in the comments. But this is where you go in order to take the apology language quiz to see how you fare regarding the different um, apology languages. The first one is um, accepting responsibility. That's the first one that we covered. Um, we talked about expressing regret. We talked about requesting forgiveness. We talked about planned change and then making restitution. All right. So making restitution, planned change, requesting forgiveness, expressing regret, accepting responsibility. Those are uh, the love languages, those are the languages in which love, excuse me, forgiveness, forgiveness is communicated to us. But it's funny I say love language because as we know, it's from the same um, authorship, but also um, there are connections, obvious connections between one's love language and one's apology language or languages. So make sure uh, that you kind of get caught up in that way. And thank you, Sister Vicky or Deacon Eric, whoever, whomever, <laughs> whichever one of you put that in the chat. Thank you guys very much. All right. Ernicia, hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And um, so with that, let's go ahead and, and move on. Um, we did have homework before I move on. We did have homework. You know how when the professor is is moving forward and you might hope that they forget um, <laughs> that they assign homework. Well, I didn't forget. It was a homework assignment that was given to us last week. And did you do? Okay, it's Sister Vicky. Hey, all right. <laughs> will, will the real Sister Vicky please stand up? All right. So Dr. Tiana did hers. Excellent. Excellent. I did mine. And I hope that you did yours. It was to have someone you love and are in relationship with take the quiz. Okay. Um, and then you were to discuss uh, results. 
All right. So find out, you know, discuss what their results are and then you share your results. And it's um, ultimately for the betterment of the relationship that you have with that person. It could be a friend. Um, it could be a spouse, a significant other. It could be a parent. It could be a child. It could be a mentor or mentee. It could be whomever, somebody you work with on the job closely, somebody you work closely with in ministry, et cetera. All right. All right. And Sister Valencia says she did her. She sent it to her girls and they're going to have a little fellowship. To, oh, I like that. I like that. All right. So she sent this to the girls and now they're going to get together, have a little fellowship and discuss their results. That is great. That's really going to strengthen you all sisterhood and bond. Good evening, Sister Patricia. Y'all, Sister Patricia, she was she was greeting. She was greeting on Sunday at that door. And not only that, she I think she might have beat me to church. <laughs> she was there bright and early, ready to go. And um, her nickname is going to be Evangelist Patricia. And uh, you know why. If you know, you know. All right. All right. So um, hope you did your homework. If not, go ahead and make that happen. Trust me, it's going to be beneficial and you're going to be glad that you did. All right. Anybody else want to share their homework experience in the chat? How did it go? Was it enlightening to the other person? Did they have any commentary? I'll look out for that type of feedback in the chat. All right, Brother Justin said the Breedens are on. What's up, Breedens? Somebody turned 30 recently. I'm not going to say who. <laughs> yes. All right. Look, Evangelist says, and Sister Patricia gave the best hugs. I love it. I love it. I love to hear that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let y'all go ahead and put your feedback in there. Meanwhile, uh-oh, what's up, namesake? Yes, indeed. We have Brother Flood on, a fellow Joseph the <laughs> Third. All right, so speaking of J's, J. Cole, you like that segue? J. Cole, the rapper, and the rapper Kendrick Lamar. So and those are the two gentlemen in case, because, you know, everybody is not hip. Everybody is not into hip hop or rap or pop culture and things like that. So if you saw the flyer and you were wondering, well, who's that? We got some guest preachers and, and guest psalmists on Bible study tonight. <laughs> um, the two guys at the top, the, the um, one who has his head kind of down uh, and he has kind of like a yellowish outline. That's J. Cole. The other gentleman on the other side of him, um, that is Kendrick Lamar. He has on like the, the blue with the hood. All right. So those are the guys that we're referring to tonight in case you were not hip. All right. Um, <laughs> Y'all like the segue? Uh oh, we got some people who were wondering who that was. Well, now you know. If you don't know, now you know. All right. Um, so in the world of hip hop and rap, um, we know about this term, a diss, you know, a, a diss track. Um, a diss track is nothing new to uh, hip hop and rap. And so I researched some history on diss tracks and I found um, that the oldest diss track was discovered back in 1933. All right. So I don't think it's anybody on here, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, but is anybody on here older than that? Was anybody born before 1933? If not, then the, the research history <laughs> of diss tracks shows that diss tracks, uh, they've been around longer than any of us, all right? So it's nothing, nothing, nothing new, um, not just in hip hop, but in many other genres of music, as a matter of fact, that one in 1933 was not a, a hip hop diss. Hip hop wasn't even out then. All right. That era came later. And so um, these type of diss tracks or songs where you are uh, dissing someone, kind of, you know, messing with them, 
teasing them, talking bad about them, et cetera, is something that is not new. Um, and there is something that shows up in other genres. For example, the Beatles. Y'all know about that band, the Beatles? The Beatles bandmates uh, were surely not a stranger to diss tracks, especially after the band broke up. There were a few songs that were made and released um, about fellow bandmates after the Beatles broke up, all right? So it's not even a cultural thing. It's not a color thing, if you will. Um, diss tracks can be found in many different uh, cultural backgrounds. But because this one that we're talking about tonight is relating to hip hop and rap, that culture does have some famous rivalries and some famous disses. Um, so you might know some of them. I'll say some. If you know somebody and say, you could put them in the chat. But um, <laughs> it's just Andre said, this is news to her. Good, good. You're learning something. Yeah, it was news to me too when I endeavored to research it. I said, what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Got you. Got you. Just catching up on the comments a little bit. All right. So uh, Ice-T and LL Cool J. Ice-T and LL Cool J. That's an example. Okay. Um, Ice Cube and NWA. All right. Uh, Dr. Dre, Z E, uh, Tupac and Biggie, Little Kim and Foxy Brown, Jay Z and Nas, Little Kim and Nicki Minaj, <laughs> Drake and Pusha T, Nicki Minaj and Meg The Stallion. Even Mariah Carey and Eminem. <laughs> and what I found out in my research, too, is that a young 50 Cent, he was looking for a hit. So he made this song, which dissed about 50 different artists. All right. Because he was just trying to make some noise, get some attention. And Jay-Z actually ended up responding. So uh, somebody even trying to trying to get put on. Uh, might make a diss in order to get some attention. And I guess it worked for him. I'm not saying that's the way to go if you're trying to, you know, get in whatever industry, but <laughs> it apparently worked for Young Half a Dollar. Amen. Um, so we have here, let's see. Oh, y'all coming with it. All right. Some of these I said, some of these I might not have said. Matthew and Peter is hilarious. Yes, indeed. You can tell you've been watching The Chosen, Brother John. <laughs> um, and on Facebook, Brother John is saying Matthew and Peter, L-O-L. <laughs> All right. So um, basically, let's 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 cut to the chase. Uh, both Drake. Uh, Y'all know about about Drizzy Drake. Um Matt and Pete, exactly. Both Drake and um, J. Cole, uh, they're, they're both rappers. They apparently have been dissed a number of times in the past by Brother Kendrick. And they have uh, gone back and forth in subtle, not so subtle ways that often go over people's head, actually. Um, but most recently, Kendrick released a song or he dropped a bomb as as referred um and it's actually a song that he was featured on which had a line dissing both j cole and drake all right um so uh drake's picture is not on the flyer if you're looking for him you can google him if you used to watch a show called degrassi then you know what he looks like amen <laughs> um yes indeed but brother aubrey you, you can look him up but j cole responded uh, with a song on his latest project. Um, and that leads to during J. Cole's set. Okay, so remember that's the 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 gentleman gentleman. Let me pull him up. All right, with the yellow outline. During J. Cole's set at the Dreamville Festival, he stops and he apologizes to Kendrick Lamar. So let's let's get it again. So denim jacket. It's featured on a song talking about the young man in black, as well as another rapper. Okay, the young man in black, he releases a project on his project. 
he responds. You know, they say you got such and such a time to respond. Well, guess what? He responds. And so now that leads us to where we are now. So he responded with a song on his latest project. Now he is doing a set at the Dreamville Festival and he stops during his set and he does something that nobody was expecting. He does something that later we found out some people didn't appreciate. He did something that you don't hear about in the line of work that he does. He stops mid-set and he apologizes to Kendrick Lamar. All right. So All Black stops his set, apologizes to Denim with the hood. Okay. Not only does he apologize, sharing that since the release and the response the decision, the song, the move itself just doesn't sit right with his spirit is what he said. That's a quote. Just doesn't um, sit right with his spirit. He also has since removed the song from streaming platforms. So he wasn't just, you know, talking to talk. He backed it up. He removed the song from streaming platforms. So making sure you're following me, the song that he used as a rebuttal, if you will, and that he included on his project. He issued an apology to Kendrick and J. Cole removed the song from his streaming platform since then. And that's huge because now we're talking money, okay? And during this apology that he made at Dreamville, he mentioned his love for Kendrick, his respect for his greatness. And he mentioned that however Kendrick decided to respond, okay? And this is important, too, because this is talking about something that we talked about last week. He's saying, listen, I'm doing my part. I'm apologizing, but I'm also acknowledging that however you want to respond, you have the right to respond. So even if you want to respond by creating another diss track and, and by, you know, responding that way, then that's all on you. You have at it. He put his chin out there and said he'll take it on the chin. And so he made it clear that he wasn't apologizing to try to force Kendrick to respond anyway, rather than the way that he wanted to and chose to respond. All right. So again, that's, that's touching on something we talked about last week. And he said that he wanted to do this, this whole apology moment to get back in alignment with God and with his purpose, um, admitting to backtracking and making mis a mistake that was similar to a mistake that he made 10 years ago. So he was kind of reflecting and he's like, no, nah, I don't want to make, because remember, this has been going on for a while. I don't want to make the mistake I made a decade ago. He spoke to desiring growth, right? And so he shared that he couldn't even sleep at night and he just, he couldn't shake it. And um, instead of telling you all this, why am I not just showing you the video? Because it has too much cussing in it. That's why <laughs> he said it eloquently, but he said it colorfully. So we're not... We can't show that video, praise God. But anyway, I'm doing, you know, as, as much as I can to give you a good recap. How about that? <laughs> Amen. So um, he 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 says here, and, and I actually have, I'll share with you a censored excerpt from um, NBC News because that, I mean, that's how big of a deal this was. It got news coverage, Okay. And so, actually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw it in the chat. All right, give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat so we can read it together. And um, I trust that y'all are still with me and following me. I tried to give the visual aid and everything that I needed to give so that even if you don't know these gentlemen, then you're able to follow along. All right, let's see. I'm going to put this in the chat. Boom. 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 Okay. See, some of y'all have seen the video. And you tuned in tonight to see if I could cover this without cussing. 
<laughs> well, hopefully you stay tuned in after finding out that I can. <laughs> and I did. Amen. <laughs> All right. So um, I put in the chat. Mm hmm. Did it allow all of it to go in there? Yeah, yeah, this was the clean. Okay, all right. Shabria, if Shabria said I did a good job, I did a good job. <laughs> all right, my longtime friend, classmate, and neighbor, Shabria, thanks for being on. <laughs> she said I did a good job. Amen. Dr. Shanice said this was a good, clean recap. All right. <laughs> All right, clean, clean. There we go. So I got the approval from the millennials. So I'm doing good. Amen. <laughs> so check this out. Um, the the excerpt from Pop Culture, the NBC NBC News excerpt from the Pop Culture section of NBC News. It says this. It says, um, "I'm so proud of that project, except for one part." Cole said at his music festival, Dreamville Festival. It's one part of that, fill in the blank, that made me feel like, man, that's the lamest fill in the blank I ever did in my fill in the blank life. And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. Cole on Sunday told the crowd that he tried to jab Lamar back in a friendly way, but that it didn't sit right. He said he hopes that Lamar didn't, quote unquote, feel no way but that he would take another diss on the chin, that's what I was telling y'all, if Lamar was offended, okay? So I don't know if all of that made it in there. I think, let's see, where did it stop? Did it stop at on the chin? Oh, there we go. Okay, no, you can see the whole thing. All right. Sounds good. So um, this is the excerpt. And the reason I wanted to put the excerpt in here is so that you can refer to it, because now we're about to analyze the apology. OK, we're about to use what we know, the tools that we have, et cetera, in order to analyze this apology that Brother Cole has has issued. All right. So I want to know and get ready in the comments section. Y'all look like y'all already heating up in there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> BET edit. Y'all are funny. Y'all are funny. OK. Um, I want you to get in the comment section and let me know what apology language or languages we see in play here and why. All right. So now that we are experts in the field of apology and in the language of apology, and we know the breakdown. Now, you might have to go ahead and, and pull up your screenshot from last week or something like that. Or you might have to go to Google real quick if you weren't with us in order to know um, not only the five, but what they mean. All right. So that you can properly diagnose, if you will, um, and describe the type of apology that we see here with Brother Cole, all right? Can y'all do that for me? Yes, indeed. All right, now we got some people already in the chat, okay? We got Dr. T and Deacon Renee saying, accepting responsibility. They said, listen, I know that when I see it. Accepting responsibility, and that is great, and that is true. Deacon E says, expressing regret. All right. And that's also good. That's also true. OK, Dr. Tiana, accepting responsibility is what I thought of first. Excellent. Shabria. Shabria says expressing regret. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Sister Vicky says accepting responsibility slash expressing regret. I love it, y'all. OK, Dr. T says making restitution as well. Uh Oh, OK. I was wondering if anybody saw that one. Okay, that's it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's it. Okay. Yep. Brother Flood and Deacon Butler for sure. 
evangelist expressing regret and accepting responsibility. Yes, Dr. Tiana is more than one. Definitely, definitely more than one. Sister Sakina said accepting responsibility. Okay, Sister Maya said expressing regret. Sister Valencia, accepting responsibility and expressing regret and making restitution. I love it. Now, y'all are y'all are giving me some good ones, but now I need to know why. Give me some uh, supporting details, you know? Give me um, give me some, some details to say why you chose what you chose. Sister Carlisa, how you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, responsibility is key. I love it. Being accountable. I love it, Sister Carla. Good evening to you, ladies. Profit is favor. Yes, accountability, responsibility. I love it. These are all words that definitely apply to Brother Cole's apology. Okay. So now I want some of those same people who gave me some of these same apology languages to tell me why. Why did you choose that or those? Okay. And Shabria says that he was convicted. Yeah. Yeah, definitely for him to make a move like this, um, he had to be convicted, you know? Like he said, he is, it's all he was thinking about. He couldn't sleep at night. And for him to make a bold move like this, he definitely was convicted, as were we, a lot of us on Sunday. <laughs> we're familiar with conviction. Um, take ownership of your actions. That's right. That's right. He acknowledged what he did. Was the lamest thing? He, yes. Okay. So since Andrea is letting us know, she's reminding us. Let's 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 roll the tape. He acknowledged what he did was the lamest thing that he'd done in his career. So that is definitely accepting responsibility if we've ever seen it. Right? He acknowledged. He said, "Listen, that was the lamest thing that he ever done." He accepted responsibility. Evangelist says he definitely identified where he went wrong. Yep. And never made it about what Kendrick did or didn't do. Now that's gold because as far as some of us are concerned, Kendrick had it coming. Kendrick started it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Kendrick, he the one who released that line prior to J. Cole releasing, you know, the song on his project. Uh, what is it called? Might delete later. So listen, here's the thing. We might say, if anything, if I'm apologize, I'm not going to leave you in the clear. I'm going to at least bring up why I did it in the first place. But Brother Cole, he didn't. He didn't even bring up why he did it. He didn't bring up Kendrick at all except to show love and to respect him. And that's that's respectable. That's very respectable. Um, she continues, he was concerned with owning his part in it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. I love it. I love it. So go ahead and, and take a moment and put what you think, what you feel, and then give me some support, okay, so that we can take a moment and see, hey, what was at play here, okay? All right, I got my aunt on. Aunt Laura Michelle Smith, and she says contrition. All right, contrition. Yes, indeed. That reminds me of the scripture about a broken spirit and a contrite heart. And so, um, indeed, he was remorseful. You could tell that he wish he wishes he didn't do it. He wishes that he could take it back. All right. And then right under her is her big sister, Doctor T who says accepting responsibility, he recognized that he was wrong, he couldn't shake the feeling, and he faced it. That's right. I love it. And that's important, that facing it, because sometimes we'll know that we were wrong, we'll not be able to shake the feeling, but we'll bite the bullet, and we'll kind of just wait for the feeling to dissipate and do whatever we have to do to not issue that apology. But Brother Cole is letting us know, uh-uh, when you can't shake it, like some of these words that we've seen, the contrition of it all, the um, being, uh, uh, what is the word that we talked about earlier? The, the being convicted of it all. So the conviction of it all, the contrition of it all is saying, no, I'm not going to, you know, not move forward. I gotta do something with that. I have to face it. All right. 
And it reminds me of quenching the spirit. That's what it means spiritually. When you're convicted of something, when you have that contrite heart and you don't move on it, it's called quenching the spirit. Um, another terminology is grieving the spirit. And we definitely don't want to grieve the spirit. So, of course, we're reviewing this pop culture thing tonight, but it's always going to come home. It's always going to land home um, to us spiritually. And so we want to make sure that when we can't shake something, we don't try to force ourselves to shake it. You know, when we're convicted that we don't try to mute our convictions, which is something that I talk about a lot. Um, but we allow for the convictions to do what it's supposed to do. And that's to move us, you know, to move us toward the right thing, the right way, the right decision, the right words, the thing that we are supposed to do. So I love that. Sister Maya said expressing regret because he realized the response did not speak to the growth he accomplished over the last decade and did not want to backtrack. OK, I love that because now we're pulling in uh, from a few weeks ago. Uh, where we talked about repentance, all right, and deciding, you know, I'm not going back. I've come too far to go back. And so I, I love that and you bringing that support in there. Um, taking it down was a clue for Dr. Shanice and then offering to take another disc would be taking the consequence. Yeah, that, that did it for me. And that definitely showed um, that he, to me, is making restitution. Also, by making a public apology and taking the song off of the album, to me, that's making restitution. He pulled it. All right. So now if you go to stream, it, it's not there. And that's taking the step and putting literally your money where your mouth is. <laughs> and um, yeah, he made restitution in addition to like, honestly, it, it <laughs> I um, fried some chicken yesterday and I had a poll on my story asking uh, you like flats, you like rounds, or you like both of them, B-O-F-F-U-M. Now, personally, I'm a both of them man, all right? I want a mixture of both, right? And so I think that <laughs> when it comes to um, these apology languages, it's giving both of them, it's giving all of them, perhaps, all right? But let's see, let's see. Um, Dr. Renee said that he acknowledged he was wrong and expressed he wouldn't make a rebuttal even if one came back at him. And that's good too. Yep, he didn't just tell him, you know, where you can you can do whatever you want to do. Um, but also it was that um, the fact that we're convinced that even if Kendrick does respond again, that J. Cole is not going to move from his position. And I love that, y'all, because just as love is a decision, forgiveness is a decision. And if he has decided to forgive Kendrick, then that's something that he's going to stand in no matter what. He's not going to flip. He already made it very plain that him making this decision wasn't based on Kendrick. Kendrick can do and say what he wants. This was based on the conviction, um, the contrition that he had. All right. So I love that. Good point. Good point. Um on YouTube, Brother John said, genuinely repenting because he mentioned making the mistake once before and expressing that this isn't a road he wants to travel again. He isn't only apologizing, he is repenting. That's right. He's turning back. Even if he made a wrong turn, he's turning back. I love it. Um, Deacon E chose, okay, Deacon E got his own, uh, <laughs> his own Facebook account at work now. He chose expressing regret because of keywords, lamest thing. And also he couldn't sleep. That's very true. That shows that like anytime you call and something you did lame, you regret doing it. All right. Um, love it. Love it. Love it. Dr. Tiana, he didn't have to accept that he was wrong in anything. He could have just kept making good music and feeding the listeners. That's right. And I love this because this is what I said Sunday. Are you willing to um, forgive? Are you willing to apologize, you know, even when it is not common um, or even when it's countercultural, you know, even when it's something that you could profit from in some ways, will you put all that aside and do what you know you're supposed to do? Okay. Even if it's not always what you want to do or what the people want you to do, because 
it infuriated people. Afterwards, there was much backlash. Um, there were there was much backlash from people saying that he should have never done that, you know, and coming up with all these theories and all of, all of this stuff. So, yeah, even with all the noise, are you able to silence the noise to do what you know to do? Okay. All right. Dr. T said, expressing regret, he made a public apology and he focused on his part. That's right. Making restitution. Yep. He removed the song. Sister Victoria, proud of that project, except for one part. Yeah, that's how he introduced it. So everybody thought he was about to talk about, you know, the new project. Woo, woo, woo. And then er, he said, yeah, I'm proud of that project, except for one part. He led with that. And that was indeed expressing regret. The lamest thing he'd ever done in his life, except the responsibility, would take another diss on the chin, making restitution. That's right. Shabrina said um, he became of the world of the worldly acts and behavior and not what God has called him. Yep. Um, taking it down was making restitution both financially and emotionally. Ah, I like that. Yep. Emotional and financial restitution because it was bringing peace to his emotions. Um, but also it was, um, something that could, you know, will hurt him quote unquote financially. So it's almost like um, making up to him in that way, in the event that that reaches him in that way. Cole decided to turn the other cheek. He saw the bigger picture. He realized that this thing is bigger than him. He realized he has influence and that this could turn into a wildfire. I love it. And he realized it was bigger than him. It's bigger than an industry. It's bigger than a uh, fandom. Okay. Uh, Sister Carly didn't sit well with him and had to, he had to free himself. That's right. It was out of his character to do and act on how others wanted him to act. Love that. Sister Valencia, he accepted the responsibility. She's on YouTube. He accepted the responsibility of how the diss occurred in the aftermath. He expressed regret by saying it and apologizing. And though they didn't converse, he went ahead and made it up to Kendrick. That's right. Okay. Dr. T said, Cole humbled himself. That was big, no matter what the naysayers had to say. Ultimately, we are accountable to God. That's what counts. That's true. And then even in all of his colors, um, you know, he was pointing to God and that it didn't sit well in his spirit. And he ultimately wanted to do right by God and the path, you know, um, that he is on. I guess whatever path that's different than a decade. All right. And so um, that's good. Deacon E, it's easy to follow man's way of handling things. That's so true, especially when it's a part of the culture. It's more honorable and wiser to follow God's way and not give into the yields and pressures of man. I love it. I love it. That's right. This is the season of reconciliation. That's why we live for Christ and not man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Y'all are preaching in the comment section. I love it. I love it. I feel your heart. And I feel like we're all in the room chatting it up. Amen. And so thank you for, uh, for the part that you play in this analyzation. So again, accepting responsibility is something that we see. Uh, we see expressing regret. Um, we do see making restitution for sure. All right. And the other two is um, re requesting forgiveness. That's something that uh, we did not particularly see. Um, it might be something that we kind of heard with the heart of things. Uh, and then plan change. That arguably was a part of it. That arguably was a part of it. Just him um, setting the tone for how he would move forward and how he wouldn't move forward and how he wouldn't you know return to the the things and the behaviors of old but anyway this was a great apology now what's really crazy is this is only one thing in headlines um that we pulled in tonight but there were multiple things that happened and i told you guys that forgiveness and and apologies um you know that that it's it's in the winds you know and um a lot of people are talking about it and not only talking about it, but we're seeing it happen in real time. And so maybe next week we'll take a look at a couple of others. Some of them are, uh, well, the other two that um, specifically I'm talking about, they happen within the church. Okay. Um, not, not our church, but the big C church. 
there are two examples um, of forgiveness and an apology that happened in the church uh, just this week. All right. So we're going to talk about those two and take a look at those. Those are a little more layered. Um, because of the positions of the people who are expressing apologies and the different stories behind them. But I think tonight was a good example of how we can analyze now that we know what we know, we can analyze an apology and see where it's coming, how it's coming, what we could learn from it, et cetera. All right. All right. So give yourselves a hand. Go ahead and put some hand clapping emojis in the chat. Good discussion, good conversation, and thank you for being a part of it. All right. Love it. Love it, love it. Praise God. Okay. All right. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Thank you for your participation. And um, yeah, so so want to be a little more respectful of time tonight. Uh, at this juncture, if you have any closing thoughts, closing ideas, or anything like that, then go ahead and put them in the chat so that we can share them. And then from there, We'll get into our prayer requests and praise reports. Any closing thoughts or ideas? And you can drop them in the chat. If not, go ahead and start dropping anything that you would like us to be in prayer with you concerning. Go ahead and, and drop that. Oh, Miss Pandora missed you too. It's gonna be um it's gonna be on so you can always go back and watch the replay. All right, Deacon E, we should always try to think before we act. That is so true. That is so true. We should always think before we act. Yep. And that's really good because honestly, if we think before we act, a lot of times that can keep us from having to go through all we go through to get to the apology. Uh-huh. That's that's a good angle. All right, Sister Valencia thinks this shows how apologizing is always bigger than us. She can only imagine how people, how many people felt convicted by this as well as started apologizing to others. Love it. Andrea thinks it was big for J. Cole considering the industry is full of pride. Yeah, that's a good way to put that. All right, we're going to pray for Shabria's work environment. Got you. Thank you, Deacon Lorraine. Thank you. All right, Dr. T, this shows that we can learn lessons from others, even though we think we are more spiritual than others. Yes, I love that. Yep, that's what I was thinking about. Never, you know, never shut yourself off from being able to learn and glean because um, we were not, you know, talk, talking about pastor so-and-so or, you know, preacher, teacher so-and-so, but there was a lesson even in this industry um, that we're talking about tonight, even um, amongst these people, there was a lesson that we could glean. So I love that. Stay open, stay teachable, no matter the teacher. Um, discerning, but teachable. Justin, reconciliation is more than just words, but a path of action. Love it. All right. Evangelist, I think it's a testament to the fact that God can use anything and anyone for his agenda and his glory. The fact that J. Cole can do this with a platform as large as his speaks volumes. Yes, indeed. Because at the end of the day, it speaks to prince, biblical principles, you know, of humility, forgiveness and things like that. And also he talked about God, even though a lot of the publications, like even the one we read, um, tried to censor God out and take parts of the lines that he talked about God and leave God out, but he talked about God. And so um, I believe that God can get glory out of that um, if if we allow him to. Okay. We got a praise report. 
Last week, we prayed for Jax. And this week, Jax has been breathing so well at night. Hallelujah. He's doing much, and that's in capital letters, better, and doesn't snore as much in his sleep. He got a referral to an ENT on Friday, but they likely won't. Whoa, come on. Likely won't need to make the appointment. Hallelujah. Thanks for your prayers and for agreeing with us in prayer for him. I love that. We always offer up our prayer requests in hopes that they turn into praise reports and for it to one week later, you know, um, be listed here as a praise report is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. All right. Let's see what else we got. Uh, We're going to keep Deacon Butler in, in our prayers. He's recovering from the carjacking incident. And we're praying that God continues to work things out and provide the desires of his heart. And we praise God, yeah, that you're still here. Got it. All right, Deacon E, um, we're going to keep your co-worker in prayer whose mom passed. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Okay. Yes, that's right, Sister Patricia. Humbling yourself plays a big role in apologizing. Yeah, yeah. Getting rid of that pride. That pride comes before the what? The fall. Um, But the word says, he who humbles himself will be exalted. He who exalts himself will be humbled. All right. That's right. God can use anyone for his glory. All right. Elder Carmen, we're going to pray as she speaks on a panel tomorrow night. That's right. As a part of a women's conference, she will be speaking on a panel tomorrow night. And uh, we're going to pray that all goes well with her and with that. All right. Deacon Robbins, co-worker, and her family, ah, her niece was killed in a car accident on Friday. Got you. Got it, got it, got it. Um, Sister Valencia has a praise report on YouTube. Her co-worker has been starting to grow closer to God over the past months. And today she told her that she is getting baptized next Sunday. Wow, glory to God. Amen. Amen. God is using us. That Matthew 5 that we read about on Sunday. If he made us a light stand, you know, he's not going to put us under a bucket, right? No, he's going to have us to shine. So I love that we can shine in a workplace or any place. We can shine our light, okay? All right, let's see. Praise report. Justin says... My wife and I have been in close contact with Pastor Joe for a new job for him. He can say he has been at his new job for a month and growing. Yeah, (laughs) you. That's right. Praise God. We've been praying. And God came through and a month flies by. Time flies. But it's so good to know that you've been there and you've been growing. Love it. Love it. Love it. Glory to God. Does my heart so good. Okay. Amen. And, you know, those things encourage us, you know, to, to share, um, you know, men ought always pray and not faint. Um, we know when two or three are gathered in his name, touching and agreeing, uh, we know that, uh, you know, one can put a thousand to flight. We know all these scriptures about what happens when we unify. So I love how we can unify in prayer. I'm doing the praying tonight, but as you see these prayer requests, you lift them up too on your own time and we bombard heaven and we watch God move and we watch God work, okay? Um, Sister Marche, we're praying. Great grandmother, she's been diagnosed, okay, with pancreatic cancer and sent to hospice. Got you, got you, got you. We will be praying um, for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And um, Sister Marche, what are we, three weeks out? (laughs) Praise God. If you know, you know. Okay. Sister Patricia, you want clarity from God concerning your job because of the conflict with um, Kindle and school and all of that. Okay. Got you. Got you. All right. Evangelist. Mr. Addison, recovering from a stroke, out this week. Got it. Okay. Got you. Got you. All right. We will be lifting those things up. Anybody else, go ahead and put it in the chat. 
Amen. We are encouraged. We are encouraged that God is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. He is a prayer answering God. He's the wonder working God. Hallelujah. Got you. Yes, Shabria, we are praying over the health of your unborn baby. Yes, indeed, we sure will, as well as yours. Okay. And Miss Pandora, yes, your dad got you, got you, got you. All right. So as always, I'll begin to pray. Um, if anybody has anything that you think of, and I've already started praying, you can go ahead and still leave it in the chat. It'll stay up. And um, we always are able to go back to take a look at it and to include it in our prayers this week in our time with God. Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you so much. We thank you for the way, uh, Lord, that you allowed us to be exposed to um, putting to work what it is that we have been learning, uh, what we studied last week, what we exposed ourselves last week. Thank you for allowing us to um, uh, allow for it to be practically applied. And so, Father, we pray, Lord, that you got glory out of tonight and that we learned something even out of tonight's lesson and especially out of tonight's lesson. We pray in the name of Jesus that everybody who may have joined, uh, Lord God, uh, from wherever they are, that um, you reach them right where they are. God, I thank you for Shabria and I pray that you would bless her in her work environment, uh, whatever it is that she stands in need of, whether it is peace Lord God, and whether it is um, some type of provision, we know that you're able to do it. And so, Father, even now, as she publicly um, asks for this request, that there are people who will be praying that don't even know her, don't know her work situation, but know you, Lord God, and will go to you on her behalf, Lord. And I pray that she will begin to see a sudden change in her work environment. Um, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Um, that you would also continue to bless baby Jax. We thank you for um, the way that you've blessed him, the way that you've healed God. And I thank you that in this season, you'll be doing that even more, but we'll be canceling appointments, Lord, that we have made, Lord, in such a time where we may have experienced uh, the need, Lord, or whatever the distress was. I pray, Father, that you would alleviate it so much so that by the time the appointment day comes around, we don't even need it anymore. God, I believe that you can do it, and we know you can do it because we literally have seen you do it. Father, I pray that you would bless for uh, bless, um, and send a special blessing for Deacon Eric Butler. Lord, continue to heal him of any trauma, Lord, that he's dealing with um, after experiencing the carjacking. We thank you that his car was recovered. We thank you, Lord, that you are ironing out all details and all complexities of everything he's dealing with now on the other end of it. But God, we put at the forefront that we thank you for his life. We thank you that he was unharmed. We thank you that he was uh, not hurt. He was not dangered um, physically, Lord God. And I thank you that he was able uh, to walk away from that situation to tell the story. And so, Father, continue to allow for everything involving the recovery, Lord God, um, to work out for his good and for your glory. Father, bless Deacon Eric Wright Mosby's co-worker, um, who experienced loss, God, allow uh, for your Holy Spirit to bring comfort uh, to the family, Lord God. And I pray, uh, Lord, that you would just um, even get glory out of this situation, um, allow for the mending that takes place to be obvious that it's at your hands, that you, Father, will get glory and that you would even draw um, his coworker and all um, impacted by this loss closer to you. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you um, that you would also bless Elder Carmen as she goes forth tomorrow um, on this panel. Give her the words to say. Give her the heart for the women that she'll be ministering to. Holy Spirit, surround her, Lord, and let the anointing fall fresh on her, uh, Lord God. Give her everything that she needs in order 
um, to declare what it is that you have for her to share. And we thank you in advance that it's going to be amazing in the name of Jesus. Bless Deacon Robin's coworker and her family who also experienced loss, tragic loss, unexpected loss. Lord God, I pray that you would touch and heal their wounded hearts, Lord. I thank you that the word talks about how you are near to the brokenhearted, how you uh, bandage up their wounds. And so literally, Lord, bandage up the wounds of those uh, who have experienced loss at the hands of this car accident. I pray, Father God, that you would repair, um, Lord God, hearts and minds, and that you would allow for healthy healing and for good grief to take place. Uh, Father, I thank you for Sister Valencia and bless her coworker who is turning her life around, Lord. Um, I pray that it will be um, a turn, Lord, that will be consistent, a turn, Lord, that will bring others to Christ, Lord. And I thank you for this discipleship model that you've given us, this model of multiplication that Valencia is able to to minister to her coworker and the coworker's life has changed. And then the coworker is able to minister to somebody else and their life has changed and it keeps going. And if we all do that, God, we thank you um, that the gospel, Lord, will be spread and that we will uh, see fruit all over. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus uh, for, for Miss Pandora's dad, who's experiencing health issues. I thank you that you're a healer. And I thank you also that you would provide Lord, the resources, the energy, and everything that Miss Pandora and the family who is caring for him needs in this hour. You are a needs meeting God. Strengthen them, build them up where they are torn down, and strengthen them where they are weak in the name of Jesus. Um, Father, I pray that you would bless Brother Dempsey. We thank you for healing in his legs. We thank you um, for, for the fact that his legs are well, Lord, touch him. Even now, allow him to feel the warmth of your spirit and your precious Holy Ghost moving through his bones, Lord, and moving through his body. I thank you that you have healed him and that you continue to do so in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Brother Justin, and we thank you for this new job. We pray that he will continue to grow, that he will continue to excel, and that, God, you will continue to get glory out of his life professionally, personally, and in all other areas. Father God, we thank you so much uh, for Sister Marche's great-grandma. We thank you for her life. We thank you for her years. And we thank you even for this season that your hand is still on her. And so, Father God, bring healing to her, uh, Lord God, whatever that means, it's well with our souls. And I thank you, Father God, that you would allow for her um, to um, experience exactly what it is that you have in mind for her, even while under hospice care. Father God, I thank you that she has a loving family, and I thank you that she will feel their love even in this hour. Um, God bless Sister Patricia, Lord. Thank you for opening up the door for her for this job. Now, please give her the clarity regarding it. And I know that you will, God. She's asking you, Lord God, we're asking you and you're going to do it. And um, this test that she's in now, it will turn into a testimony, God. And she will testify of this very season and she will testify of this very decision. Bless Mr. Addison. Um, Lord, who's recovering from a stroke, I pray. Lord God, thank you, first of all, that he's still here. Thank you that the stroke did not take him out. And thank you in the name of Jesus that recovery will be swift. Father, in the name of Jesus, um, thank you, Lord, that um, the rehab facility will take good care and everything will go smoothly in South Carolina. Father, we pray for Sister Shabria's uh, unborn baby, we thank you uh, that he's happy, healthy, and whole, that it will be a happy and healthy, Lord God, um, pregnancy, remainder of the pregnancy. And even as far as the uh, labor and delivery, we come against complications of any kind. We thank you that everything will be smooth. We thank you, Lord God, that um, the baby is doing well in utero, um, growing and thriving and receiving all of the nutrients and things that is needed in order uh, for uh, him to be built up, Lord. Um, and so I thank you that uh, as he comes to us, Lord, earthside, as they say, that he will be a blessing not only to his mom, Lord God, and, and his parents, but to his family and to the world, Lord. 
um, that he was born for such a time as this, Lord, to do some things that you had in mind for him all along. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus um, that you would keep Brother George Hill in prayer, um, keep his family in prayer. Uh, there was a killing um, that they have experienced at Brooklyn Subway Station. And so I pray, Father God, um, that you would mend, Lord God, mend hearts, that you would give clarity, some of the same things that we have requested of others do for them um, in the name of Jesus and comfort, Father, in the only way you know how. Um, bless Brother Dixon's co-worker's husband who's battling stage four pancreatic cancer. I pray, Lord God, that you would move in a way that you can only be credited for. Father God, um, bless Brother Dempsey, bless his family, bless uh, Sister Tierra, that she comes back safely from her trip in Arizona. And I pray that her flight will be smooth and that she'll make it back, Lord God, um, safely and having had a good experience on her trip. God, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Thank you for the prayer requests that were spoken and those unspoken. You know our hearts, God, and you know our minds. You know the things that are plaguing us. You know the things that we're concerned about. And we believe that if we're concerned, you're concerned. We believe, Father God, that if we care, you care. We believe that you're faithful, Lord God, um, uh, to perform, God. And we believe that you literally are mindful of us. And so, Father, thank you for being mindful. And we cast our cares at your feet. We cast our cares upon you for you care for us. Let us go to sleep peacefully. Lord, anybody who's been having struggles in their mind that has been keeping them from rest, I rebuke those things in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we release shalom, shalom. We release, Lord God, your peace. You are the Prince of Peace. And I thank you that your peace will guard every heart and mind, no matter the decision, no matter the, the, the life's disruption, no matter the thing that we feel ill prepared for, but had to experience anyway, I pray, Father God, that you would come in and release your peace to us, which literally surpasses all understanding. Let it guard our hearts and minds. And I thank you, Father, for um, peaceful, sweet sleep and godly dreams for us all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Sister Patricia, we're glad that you found a church home too. And we're glad that it is Wapsi. We love you so much. I love all of you. Keep in mind on Wednesday, uh, on Sunday, um, it is uh, a special day. This month is Autism Awareness Month um, and Autism Acceptance Month. So at Wapsi on Sunday, we're asking that you wear blue in honor of it. That is the color um, to honor uh, the, the the things that we will be talking about even on Sunday. Sunday, um, Elder Carmen and I are going to have a conversation, a presentation, whatever you want to call it. We're going to have Q&A and be answering some questions and things like that to just give information, especially if you don't have um, a child or a family member or something with autism. Um, you might not know, you know, some things that you probably need to know um, in order to uh, navigate, you know, spaces with people who have that superpower. Um, so with that, um, if you will wear blue on Sunday, we're going to get the word out, uh, get a flyer out and things like that. But Sunday, the color is going to be blue for autism awareness and acceptance. All right. All right. Love y'all. Good night.